Hey YouTube, Maple Anglican here. This video is part of a series on Anglicanism and is designed to educate other Protestants on exactly why we are Catholics and yet Protestant. So without further ado, Anglicanism for Protestants, what are creeds? The Assassin's Creed series of games released by Ubisoft has unfortunately confused the meaning of creed with that of a code or guiding philosophy. A creed is in fact a statement of belief. Unlike many other ecclesiastical words I've covered so far with you, the word creed does not come from Greek. It comes from the Latin credo, which means I believe. So the Assassin's Creed is not a creed at all. Sorry, Ubisoft. Creeds are very important to Anglicans as they retain a high prominence with us like Roman Catholics and Eastern Orthodox Christians. In Anglicanism, we use three particular creeds. The first, and most often used creed, is the Apostles' Creed. The exact origin of the Apostles' Creed is debated. But tradition has it being created by the Twelve Apostles, with one stanza for each Apostle. The Apostles' Creed is generally only used by Western Christians. The following will show you the Creed as rendered and read in English and Latin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Apostles' Creed will be the creed recited for services such as morning prayer and even song. It can also be recited at communion services, but the Nicene Creed is given preference. For services involving the sacraments of baptism and confirmation, the Apostles' Creed is used instead. The second, but much more important creed, is the Nicene Creed, but more properly called the Niceno-Constantinopian Creed. In the year 325 AD, the Council of Nidia determined a statement of faith to combat the heresy of Arianism. In 381 AD, the Council of Constantinople amended and altered the creed to its generally accepted form. The following will show you the creed as rendered and read in English, Latin, and Greek. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men, and for our salvation, came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us, under Pontius Pilate, who suffered and was buried, and on the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of love, who proceeded from the Father, whom with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Nicene Creed is considered a more perfect statement of faith than that of the Apostles' Creed. It is used for services on major festivals unless a baptism or confirmation is taking place. It will always be used for ordination services. When a bishop is being ordained, it is the bishop-elect who will lead the people in the Creed. Now you may have noticed that I was showing you the Nicene Creed, I would have put some words in English and Latin in square brackets. This single Latin word has led to a little bit of controversy. And by a little bit of controversy, what I mean to say is a really big controversy. In 589, a local church council in Toledo, Spain, modified the creed, the stanza that dealt with the procession of the Holy Spirit, qui ex patre procedeth, was modified by the inclusion of the word filioque, so the creed now read, qui ex patre filioque procedeth, or, in English, who proceeds from the Father 
and the Son. This change to the Latin version of the Creed did not sit well with the Eastern Church at all. The Filioque, along with some other issues, would eventually lead to the schism between the Western and Eastern Churches. In 1998, at the 12th Lent Conference of the Bishops of the Anglican Communion, recommended dropping the Filioque from the Creed in the spirit of ecumenism with our Eastern Christian brothers and sisters. However, many liturgies still contain the offending form of the Creed. You can see a great video here on the Filioque from the Orthodox perspective from an Orthodox Christian friend of mine. The third and very rarely used creed is the Athanasian Creed. This creed is attributed to St. Athanasius of Alexandria, but it is not believed to be composed by him as it was composed in Latin, and St. Athanasius wrote in Greek. I have never seen this creed used at all in any service, but it does remain in the Book of Common Prayer and still remains an important statement and part of our faith. I've put a link to the Athanasian Creed down below if you're all interested in reading it over. Please rate, please comment respectfully, and please subscribe. And God bless you all.